Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I thought I would edit last night's telescope session. Uh, it was at 11 o'clock p.m. my time. So it was really quite late, uh, especially for those folks in Europe. And I thought I'd kind of clean it up a little bit and shorten it and give you guys a chance to see what we did last night. So let's dive right in. So what we're doing tonight, boy, we've got a good night for you. Uh, the image you're looking at right now is Arcturus, which is, you know, one of the brighter stars in the eastern sky right now here in Michigan. We're trying uh, first light with a brand new telescope, and that is uh, what is called a Stellar View uh, SV80, and it is an 80 millimeter doublet. Now, the, the Orion Eon that I have is called a triplet, and what that does is that takes the red, green, and blue light and it focuses them all so that they all come to the same focus point uh, at once. So that's a better scope than this one is. This one has two lenses in it, and it just hits two of the lights, so one of them may be out, and you may see some halos around some of the brighter objects. I don't really see one around Arcturus right now. But uh, it's not quite as good a scope as the Orion, but I'll tell you, I've been kind of playing with this over the last couple of days, and it's got some really nice optics in it. And it's a lot smaller than the Orion is. It's on my, um, it's on my uh, Explore Scientific Exos 2 mount right now. Uh, the problem that the former owner, Sean Hawkins, had with this one is I think that he had too much scope and too little mount on it. I have too much mount and too little scope. I'm actually having problems with the weights, and I had to put some... Um, put some weight on the telescope to get the scope to balance properly. But it really handles it nice. And the other day when I did some initial tests with this, I was able to get clear three-minute images, and one of which is on the community section on my YouTube page. And, uh, I mean, it really, really turned out nice. Uh, there's, you know, the stars are all nice and pinpoint. There's a satellite right there. You see that down the corner? But the stars were really pinpoint, even on a three-minute exposure. So I have a lot of hope for this one. Plus, it'll be a very nice travel scope, and I can use it with the cadets. You know, this is something that I can move around a lot easier than I can that damn 10-inch mead. It's just absolutely, uh, you know, that thing is just way too big to be handling around, you know, manhandling around, uh, you know, in the back of the truck and stuff. So... I'm using a really moderate amount of gain on this, only about 290 out of 570, and it's only a one second exposure. And look at all these beautiful stars out here. Let's go ahead. Now I'm locked on to Arcturus right now, and as you see, the, the, the tracking and, and the sighting is really, really good. But let's go ahead and go over to something else that's a little more fun to look at. So let's go ahead and do a quick test here of Stellarium. We'll bring that up. So here we are. Let's go ahead and go on over to Bode's Galaxy, just the Bode's and Cigar Galaxies. These are some of the targets that I was looking at the other day here. So let's go see if this will slew properly. And she's moving. How do you like that? We have movement. Uh, we'll just sit here and play with it a little bit. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things tonight. I've got uh, a tripod for my auto level and a tripod for the mount that Sean sent me as well. And that's an Ioptron. Uh, and it's a little battery-powered mount with a 12-volt converter on it. And that's going to be really super. And I think it's going to be just perfect for my Canon camera. Now, the Canon has got a focal length of 300 millimeters. This telescope has a focal length of 550 millimeters, and the Orion has a focal length of about 700 millimeters, you know, by the time everything gets all done with it. So let's go see if we can see Bodes here. And there it is. There's the Cigar Galaxy, and there's Bodes. You know, to be honest with you, for uh, a near across the sky slew, look how close I came to dead set center. Now, let's have a little fun with this. 
let's just see what we have here. Let, let's go ahead and do one quick thing real quick. I'm going to give a little bit longer exposure. Everything right there. Yeah, that's all I'm happy with all that. Let's do a four second exposure here and just kind of bring it up because there's the Cigar Galaxy. There's Bode's Galaxy and there's the Garland Galaxy right up there. So let's see if we can bring this a little more closer to the center. And I'll show you a neat trick for doing that. Let's go ahead and take this off. This is something that I've started playing with a little bit in astrophotography tool. So what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and connect that camera again. And we're going to shoot a shot real quick. So we'll give it a second. You can always tell it's a 10 second exposure so you can see up here what it's doing. And there it is. So there is the Garland, there's Bodes, and there's the Cigar Galaxy. Now this is the neat little trick that I wanted to show you. You guys are familiar with plate solving and we've done that many times before. So we'll solve this plate real quick. All right, so now it's happy. It knows exactly where it is. We're going to hit aim. Let's see whether or not it has to be maximized here to do it. Ah, that's what I want. Now you see right here, if I put this about right here, I'm going to get these. If I put that in the center, if I move everything over so that, that point is in the center, that'll frame everything really nice. So we'll hit go to plus. And then let's watch the magic occur. So what it's going to do is it's going to solve. It's going to make the telescope slew a little bit, and it's going to try and move that spot that I designated right to the very center of the frame. So I don't have to tweak the little arrows or anything. And there it is. Look at that. I like that little thing. So let's disconnect that camera and come on back down here. Let's go back to this one here. We'll connect our main camera again. This is the camera that Wolfie donated to the, the channel. I want to also acknowledge that Judy's out in the audience right now. Judy is a big supporter of this channel. She helped me out with a lot of the mounts um, for the big telescope. And it's just really been a good friend of this channel. Going to try and raise a little bit of funds. I, I want to try and raise about $200 and get a couple of other things. So if you guys feel the need to super chat or anything, that would be just super. And here we are. So here's the Garland Galaxy. Here's Bodes. And here's the Cigar Galaxy. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and start guiding this image. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hook the guide camera up. Get rid of all of that. Let's go ahead and start looping here. And we're going to find a star to guide on. All right, we got a star to guide on. And we're going to hit start guiding. So we're guiding right now. Going to stick this out of the way here a little bit. Never mind that. So it's going to guide on this star right here, which actually I think might be the Garland Galaxy. And then we're going to have a look here and see how carefully it's guiding. You see where the scope is pointing? You know, here it's trying to track that one star that we're, we're set. And here, here are the little corrections that need to be made. So let's see how accurate this is guiding. Look at that. The RMS error needs to be under 0 0.5. So you see right ascension is 0 
declination is 0 0.04, and the total is 0 0.17. We're, look at the, these things are staying right where we need to be. There's a satellite just went by, by the way. So now we're set up to have some fun here. Let's go ahead and take the stretch off of this and have a look at our histogram right here. Now, if you look at this histogram, here's the data that, that the camera is reading. Now you see it's got this little slope right here, but you see how this left side is clipped on the side? What we want to do is we want to move this whole thing over a little bit so that that is not clipped. And the way we move it over is by doing a longer exposure. So here, let's go ahead and do a 30 second exposure and see what that looks like. And while we do that, I'm going to go on up there and have a look at the chat real quick, see what we have. Let's see, we got Judy and we got IB in Discord. Anybody else come into Discord, guys? Here's the link if you guys want the uh, if you want to go on in and get involved in chat. We got Fred Bailey was one of our early viewers here and helped us get things set up. Darren is out here. Renee, welcome Renee, and Facty, and NANA was here a little bit earlier. Mitch is here. And Fiegelheimer is here. Yeah, I, I love it when everything comes together for the astrophotography, too. It's a lot less frustrating. You know, one of the secrets is just restart the computer before you do anything. Restart both the computers, the one that's out by the telescope, and restart the one that's in here. So let's have a look at this image real quick. First of all, look at the stars. You see how they're nice pinpoints? The telescope is really tracking nicely. And we've got the Garo in here, we've got Bodes, and then we have the Scar Galaxy. And the cool thing about it is on the Cigar Galaxy, you're starting to see a little bit of that red. Let's see if we can get a little longer exposure. Let's, let's, get, let's get risky here and try for a full minute. And Cito. That must be uh, Fagenheimer. Now, the colors are off a little bit right now. And the reason that the colors are a little bit off is that, uh, you know, there's light pollution out here. I'm in a, in a, I'm in a Borley three, uh, four sky in a small town here in Michigan. So I do have some light pollution out here, even though I have a light pollution filter but that adds a little bit of a green tint to the image as well. We're going to correct the color balance on the image here in a minute when we do some stacking, and we're going to try and maybe stack a few images of these galaxies. Now let's see whether or not it's going to track nicely. What I'm looking for is nice round little stars. I don't want to see streaks. And really, that's not bad. You're starting to get some nice detail here, especially in boats. You see the two kind of spiral arms out here? Getting a little bit of that red in there. Well, you see how the color balance is off, though? Let's do a quick stretch and see what we have here. So I'm wondering if that might be another little galaxy right up there. But you see how we're getting nice, round little stars? Let's do a little bit of stacking and see how that looks. And we'll see if we can get a little better color in this. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to call this Bode Triplet. And we're going to go ahead and hit Live Stack. So let's zero it all out real quick. Yeah, let's go see if we can get an image here. should be one coming up now. There we go. Now, you see how we got all this crappy green? And look at the, you know, here's the red peak. Here's the blue peak. Here's the green peak. And this white peak is luminesc luminescence, which, you know, has to do with uh, how bright the uh, picture is. Now... By hitting the lightning bolt over here, we're going to balance these peaks together. 
and already you see a huge improvement. Now the other thing is the data from the image is is on these on these um, curves right here. There's no sense in a wasting sensor out out in here. There's no sense in wasting sensor down here in the bottom part of the image because that's you know just this red nasty stuff and you see the amp glow right up here. Let's go ahead and kind of zero in a little bit better on that image. We want the black the black level, which is this left left dotted line right here. We want that just to the left of that peak. Now the mid range, we want to get down and probably in the bottom third of this curve a little bit. Let's bring it right out to here and see what that looks like. Already getting a little better image. Now you see the graininess of this image. Let's go see if we can get a couple of images stacked. Now, for some reason, it stacked the first image, but it didn't stack the second image, and these are 60-second exposures. So let's give it a chance to do one more here real quick, and we're going to see whether or not it stacks it or ignores it. If it ignores it, there's something wrong with our, our settings up here, our alignment settings, and our stacking. And we'll have to play with that a little bit. So let's, here's the moment of truth. Yep, didn't do it. All right, we've got a lot of stars here. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and clear that and let it start over again real quick. Because I don't see anything in here that would cause a problem. Bring the black threshold up. We've got lots of stars. We've got good focus. Bring the noise reduction. Ah, minimum star. Let's bring that down to two. Let's see if that'll give us a little better, a little better stack. Now we're not going to change any of these settings because we haven't changed the camera settings at all. Okay, so let's stack that one. The moment of truth is going to be the next one. Now one thing that you can do to make these images an awful lot better is you can do what's called dark frames, which will get rid of this amp glow up here. And you can do uh, flats which will get rid of any of the unevenness and the vignetting. You know, sometimes these outer edges of the image will be darker than the central images, like an old timey photograph. The way you do that, the way you do dark images is you put the uh, lens cap on the, on the telescope and you take uh, probably 20 images. You know, I'm taking 60 second exposure, so it would take me 20 minutes to do the darks. Now, the flats are a lot easier. You kind of get those before the sun goes down. And you put a white t-shirt over the end of the uh, telescope and you take really short exposures, maybe 500 or 1,000 of them. Yep, it's stacking now. You see that? And what that'll do is get rid of all the vignetting. Now, the other thing that it's going to do, too, is something called uh, sigma clipping. So say out of all of these images, I get a satellite that runs right through the middle of it. It's going to recognize that we've got stars. We've got these galaxies. We've got, you know, this amp glow. These are consistent from image to image. But if you get one streak where you get a satellite going through, it's going to say, hey, that's not noise. That's not supposed to be in the image. We're going to average that one out. You know, we're going to kind of bias that one out so that you don't see that streak and it'll get rid of satellite streaks. And with as many satellites as we have up there, uh, sometimes you re that's really helpful. So what we'll do is we'll stack four or five of these things and then I'll come back and I'll, we'll revisit this a little bit and see, uh, see how that's kind of tightening up a little bit and getting a little bit better. Here, we'll kind of move that over a little bit now. You see where this comes down steeply and then it evens out? I think the best place for that is just 
after it starts to flatten out a little bit. You see that image is already getting better and we've only got three images. Oh, well, something happened to PhD too. Something weird. Well, it says it's guiding. Let's go ahead and just close that and restart it just in case there's a problem with PhD2. Then we'll have a look at a couple of things that I'd like to try and find tonight. I thought we'd start off with a nice easy image of Bodes and the cigar because they're nice looking galaxies and they... The cool thing about this shorter exposure or this, this uh, wider field in the in the shorter focal length telescope is that you get you know for example i've got all three galaxies in this image now with the mead i can barely fit bode in and the cigar galaxy takes up almost the entire frame but with the shorter focal length i can get all three galaxies in here and i'm i'm thinking that's something right up there too Since we're in the process of uh, taking images right now. Yeah, we're getting... <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic guiding. Okay, there's Stellarium. Do you have it set to dither as well? Yep, it's going to dither. It's going to dither about every every three images. What and what what Ibe's talking about with dithering is that what it'll do is say the camera's pointing right here. Now, every couple of images, what it's going to do is it's going to shift the telescope so that now the camera's pointing three pixels over this way, and then it'll shift it so it's pointing three pixels up this way. What it does is it kind of switches you know it kind of moves the telescope around a little bit and the noise that we're getting in the background of that image which you can see pretty clearly see how this is all grainy in here and it looks like it's got red sand all over it what happens with dithering is as it moves over a little bit you know these little red grains of sand are next to little black areas of the background and what they'll do is they'll kind of blend into each other and cancel each other out and this will all turn black in the background. Just gives you a little bit better of an image. All right, so here's Cigar, here's Bodes, here's the Garland. I'm wondering what this little boy is out here. Let's go see if we can find anything in that area. So here's here's the cigar, here's Bodes, here's Garland. I don't see anything else other than maybe this star right here seems to be a little bit larger than some of the other ones. But that other thing that we're looking at is right up in this area. I think it's probably just that big star. We see all the red that comes out of the Cigar Galaxy, and it's got these jets going up and down. Here's the Bodes Galaxy, really nice spiral galaxy. That's a smaller spiral galaxy right there. Bodes is kind of interesting because, you know, I, I don't know if it's a barred galaxy or not, but it seems to have two big arms, one that comes around that way, and then one that comes out the other end and goes around that way. And you can see that on the image that we're taking right now a little easier. See how there's a there's an arm that comes around this way? And then there's another one that goes around like that. Let's go see what we have. DJ Moose, we've got Judy, you've got another Finlander out there. Oh. We have a few more in the Discord as well. Good. Hey, guys. Welcome. 
So Mitch, don't uh, don't you temporarily drop the exposure time so you can get a couple more uh, short frames to make sure it works? Yeah, of course. I know you never test anything, you know. On you know, you never take a five minute exposure just to see if things work. What you yeah, can do is I'm you can. Uh, you, yeah, I don't have that patience. What I do is I'll drop it down to you know, especially in something like this where I've got a couple of bright stars out there. Um, I'll take a couple of short exposures just to kind of. Oh, that's a little better right there. Come on. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, that is looking pretty good. You see how we're starting to get different. This camera's got a lot of red in it. But you see that. Looking at that thing, it, it almost looks like the uh, graininess has gone away a little bit, too. Look at the detail that we're starting to get. Look at the dust lanes. You can see the dust lanes in there? I got my Atlas downstairs. Uh, I think that's an that's an NGC object up there in the... That one? Left, or the upper right. Yeah, it could be. But I'm too lazy to go down <laughs> two flights of stairs and back up to go get it. Well, dude... Here we go. Hang on. I did see uh, Bob's uh, last community picture. That was just beautiful. Yeah, and that was, you know, I got to tell you something. That was a shitty picture. You see the big I, red streaks no, in and, it? Um, you know, I, it I, had don't, just I don't understand dithered. anything of what you're doing, but it is fantastic that you can bring them into focus. All right. You know, far away galaxies like this. Badass to yeah. But here's basically what we're looking at. Okay. So here's the framing of our picture. For some reason, it's upside down. I don't know why, because we're actually looking at it. cigars at the bottom. There's Bodes. There's Garlands. And then that thing right there is what we're looking at. It says it's a star. But that's what we're looking at right there. And I can show you that real quick. So, cigar, bodes, garland, boom. That's the object that we're looking at, and it says it's a star. Just almost looks like it's got a little streak on it. And that didn't turn out too bad. Those are one-minute exposures. And look at these stars. They're nice and round. I don't see any, you know, it's not streaking or anything. So you see, this is a really, you know, a lot of people get what's called aperture fever. You know, you get out to the star party and then you have an app, you know, and you get a bunch of middle-aged guys together out there and they have an aperture measuring contest. And, you know, the guy that's got the 8-inch telescope, you know, some guy's got to come out and have a 10-inch telescope and then a 12 and then a 14. And the biggest telescope that amateurs probably, you know, just due to the physics of light and everything and the mounts, you know, anything over about a 16 inch telescope is, yeah, I, 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 you're, you know, you're, you're getting the telescope for something other than what it was designed to do. And that is take good images. You just want to have the biggest, you want to be the biggest, you want to be a big man on campus. Now, there are some people that can use those really large ones. I'm not one of them. But the well, thing at, about it... At the uh, oh. Stanford Astronomical Society, they had a 19-inch daub, and that was about 9 feet tall. And the objective was high so that you had to get on a stepladder, a rolling stepladder, to yep. look at the scope. That was a great scope, and the detail was amazing. Uh I mean, Saturn was phenomenal in a 19-inch dub. The problem is, it's the field is so small; it just stuff just tracks away. So by the time yep. you know, two or three people get a look at an object, you have to readjust. It. Well, and, the other thing you know, with a dub tracking system, you can't put a dub that size. You know, I mean, when you start looking at actual observatories that have these monster yeah. equatorial mounts, and you know, really you know, million dollar cameras and things like that that are reading the images, you know, that's that's a whole different level. When you look at, you know, 
throwing something in the back of the truck and going out to a dark site. Yeah. You know, if you want to get an aperture that big, unless you want to mortgage your house, you're going to end up with a Dobsonian. And Dobsonians are not put on equatorial mounts. They're put on alt-as mounts. And trying to get astrophotography with a, with a big daub uh, or doing go-to or tracking with something like that, you know, with an equatorial mount, you're tracking in right ascension only. Uh, your, your declination is already set. And since you're polar aligned, all you have to do is track in one axis and that's right ascension. With, with an alt-as mount, you have to track in both declination and right ascension. And what you do is you get a series of little start, uh, stair steps. Right. Uh, and you're so limited to about 30 second exposures. <laughs> that looks damn good. <laughs> well, it, it sort of makes sense too. Those really big scopes like that are usually bought primarily for visual astronomy. Yeah, visual so astronomy, they, you don't yeah. worry about it as much. Yeah, they, they get those big apertures so they can actually see the color, yeah. which they can't normally see with smaller scopes. <coughs> well, the nice thing about it, kind. where is my... How come my stacks aren't showing up? There we go. All right, Bob, we're heading to bed. All Sorry, right. I can't stay up late tonight, but it's great seeing you guys. Yeah. We'll catch you again sometimes. Good night. Good night, man. Let's let this stack one more time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to capture this. And we're going to start looking at some other things here real quick. Let's see if we get four captures. Come on. I don't think that's I don't think that's capturing anymore. We'll go ahead and hang on to that one. And then okay, so I've got an image right now. This is a three minute image of these. And what I'll do is I'll 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 send that on up. But that's the image that we just took. So let's stop our Very live. Very clean now. I mean, that's not bad for three that's images. Really clean. Yeah, and that's what I was getting at with the uh, with the the shorter focal length wide field scopes. You know, uh, a twenty inch Dobsonian, you're going to get that right there. That's all you're going to get. But with a wider, uh, with a shorter focal length and the smaller scope look I'm using right now, not only does it weigh Five pounds, all right? I mean, the mount is four or five times heavier than the scope is and all the equipment that's on it. But look at the huge amount of relationship that I get between all of these galaxies. This will come in really nicely here. Let's go ahead and, and have a look at... Uh, uh, let's go have a look at the Gemini cluster real, or the Virgo cluster real quick. I mean, we're going to see 20 galaxies in this, this short of an area. So, that was just kind of a test shot. Markarian, Markarian's chain. It's out in Virgo. And, you know, look at all of these galaxies that we're going to see out here. So, let's go ahead and head on over there. Come on, move. See the little satellites going? See those two little satellites going up there? I was about to ask about satellites. Wouldn't they be like a little uh, pinpoint of light that walks across the sky there? Well, that's what they look like out here in Stellarium. Uh, yeah. Funny you should mention satellites because we're going to have a look at a couple of them here in a minute. I saw the Starlink ones the other night. I, I didn't know what I was looking at at first. Kind of funky, wasn't it? 
Yeah, I looked up in the sky and said, what the heck is that? That would be star the Starlink chain. Somebody just walking by on the street told me that's the Starlink. Yeah, and there's up to 60 of them. Know. Yeah. I'll tell you what, since you asked about it. Coming into the atmosphere, but then I realized it wasn't behaving normally like a meteorite would. Nope. <laughs> and there's yeah, not 60 of them lined that? up. I stopped. <laughs> You know, I'm kind of curious. You know, I tried looking at some satellites the other day, and it was doing some funky things. So it says the the time zone's not matching. Let's see if it's a little bit happier here. Now, this is a geostationary satellite, Amazonas and it's located right here so here here's me here's the satellite it says it's in sunlit right now so we're gonna we should be dead on it you know uh, our little circle of view comes down and surrounds the satellite and turns green which means that we should see it let's go see if we can see some satellites here now, to see satellites, what you want to do is you want to get about a 15-second exposure. That seems to be locked up a little bit. Let's go ahead and just stop sharp cap, and we'll come up again. I just want to see if we can get an image with this. We may have to restart it. Now, I live on a lake, which means that there is a lot of moisture in the air out there it's cold tonight we're not you know the dew point and the ambient temperature is not far apart i've got a dew heater on the telescope right now see it's 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 doing that it's it's not not doing it right so we're going to restart the computer real quick this is the way i do this real quick by the way the broadcast computer is my apple here in the here in my office and I have a LAN cable running from my router to a laptop that's out in the yard next to the computer and what I do is I take it over with something called Google Chrome remote desktop Wolfie's starting to do this down in Australia but I've been doing it since the winter because quite frankly it's too damn cold to be out there so here's here's the setup that I have this is just my laptop my work laptop but telescope control and telescope control too. These are two nearly identical Windows machines. These are little laptops that you know I used to use as my primary computer many, many years ago. I went ahead and had them upgraded uh, with some memory. They both have 16 gigs of memory now. They've got solid state drives now. And um, they also um, you know, just have Windows 10. So it's very easy to go ahead and take over that computer. So this is what's going on in my yard right now. We'll go over here. And all of my little telescope programs are right here. The first thing that we do is we start up ASCOM. ASCOM is the software that allows all of the astronomy equipment to talk to each other. Now, typically what will happen is I'll hit connect and it'll give me an error. Okay, so unable to write to telescope. Then I'll do it again. It'll give me a second error, which is a little different. And I'll hit OK on that. Third time's generally the charm. And there you go. Unpark the scope. Now we've got to start a couple of programs over here. One is Stellarium. One is SharpCap. And one is something called Astrophotography Tool. Stellarium is the planetarium software that we were looking at a minute ago. SharpCap is the good imaging software, and Astrophotography Tool is what we use for plate solving. Now the other program that we occasionally use is PhD2, which is the guiding program. But let's go ahead and get all these guys talking to each other. So, in Stellarium, go down to Telescope Control, and select 
the, the ASCOM telescope, which in my case, these are all ASCOM telescopes, but I'm using this particular mount. So by connecting that, ideally what'll happen is it'll show me where the mount's looking. Come on. And I have no idea where it's looking right now. Yeah. Okay, so there's where it's looking. I'm thinking that that's probably not where it's supposed to be. But we'll see here in a minute. So let's just make this small. Now sharp cap, what we'll do is we'll bring up the ZWO120 is the guide camera and the 294 is the color one-shot camera. Now a couple of settings that you do over here is instead of having raw 8, which is for short exposures, you want raw 16. That means it's color and it's 16-bit. Binning, you can change. Uh, this camera can go from 1 to 4. Binning, you know, that's kind of a way to average it and get rid of some of the garbage on it. We're not worried about that real right now, though. It's going to take a 15-second exposure. And our gain is set at 295. I'm happy with that. And it looks like it's taking the full exposure now, you see? One of the things with astro photography is occasionally things just freaking quit. Ah. All right. You wanted your answers. I like this. See the streaks? Those are the stars. Okay. These dots are all satellites. There's six of them right there. That's really, really nice. See how, the, see how the, the telescope is tracking the dots? And the stars are moving past it? Yep. I had to wait on the video delay, but I see it. Yep. Sorry about that, man. No, no, that's good. That's what I we, meant, though, that, you know, when you lock onto a satellite, it's just going to be a solid pinpoint. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Now, they, let me they, just they finish really doing a couple of things here real quick. Well, guys, trivia question for you. What happens when your dew point and your ambient temperature come together? Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Rut row. So you yeah. see... The mount is now pointing up basically at the North Celestial Pole. You see the streaking of the you stars? Got a new member in here. Kobe That's, just joined. Hi. Five That's, minutes ago, so might we need to fill him in. That's because what notice that the mount is connected, but it's not tracking. Let's go ahead and unpark it. And hit tracking. Now the tracking rate is what's called sidereal. Now we're going to go back over here. Now look what happened to the stars. Give it a second to stabilize. <clears throat> now the tracking on the mount compensates for the rotation of the earth and now the stars are all perfect little dots we're going to go ahead and turn this off real quick yeah what happens when your dew point and your ambient temperature hits uh reach each other is you get fog and i have a thick fog going on out there so i'm only going to be able to see looking pretty much upward I, I can't see anything probably from 30 degrees or more down to the horizon. So let's go to APT here. And shoot an image. Well, I suppose it might, might be nice if we, uh, yeah, we've got the camera on. And it's shooting an image while we're doing that. 
we're going to connect the scope. So here's the image that the camera, the camera on the main telescope sees. It doesn't know where it's pointing. It thinks it's pointing more or less towards the North Star, but it doesn't know that. So what we have to do is go over here to something called point craft. We're going to tell it where the scope thinks it's looking and ask it to look at those that image there and see whether or not it can figure out where it's done. And as you see by this compass up here, it's already done that. And we synchronize the telescope to that. And now when we go up here to Stellarium, we see the tele. Oh, 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 Starlinks going right through our field of view. We're going to do a snap picture right here and see what we can get. I'm doing this as quick as I can. There's a lot of little clicks. All right, I don't see it. Now, unfortunately, at this time, we had to curtail our efforts to hunt some satellites because a thick fog had rolled in over the lake. And it was getting late, so I thought I'd call it quits. We'll do it again on Saturday night, and we should have at least six hours of good seeing. So it should be a pretty good session. Take a moment, hit the like and subscribe, and just tune in then. Join us on Discord, and we'll all have some fun looking at the stars together. Bye-bye, the science guy.